Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I'm going to share with you the several apps, websites and software that I use to catalogue my anime, figures, video game and comic book collections. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, firstly I'm going to start off with my anime figures. The site I use to catalogue my anime figures is myfigurecollection.net and basically this site is all about Japanese figures. So if the character or the franchise is of Japanese origins, it'll be on this site. But you will find some Western characters on here. A good example is the Marvel and DC Bishoujo line. And the reason those figures get to exist on here is because Japanese company had made the figures themselves. So this site is exclusively Japanese figures. If a Western company makes a Japanese figure, it's also allowed on the site, but you won't see Western companies like Sideshow Collectibles on this site. So I think a lot of people who collect figures know this site. It's easily the best community-driven website. It's updated daily. It's also a great resource for pictures and comparisons of bootlegs of figures and their database is pretty comprehensive. If they are missing something, however, you can add it yourself as long as it meets the guidelines. There's also a calendar feature on this website which I love. It helps to keep up to date with what figures are being released each month and consequently each year. Initially, it can be a bit complex trying to search for things on the website. The key things to search for are the character's name as known in Japan in Romaji. For example, Ash Ketchum would become Satoshi the company who manufactured it, and if the series belongs to a particular classification such as Nendoroid or Figma, for example. Um, if you're unsure, you can always browse a character's figure page until you find the one you're after. Now, basically, figures are broken up into five categories on this website. Pre-painted, which kind of speaks for itself. Action figures slash dolls. So, figures that have movable joints and you can pose them in different positions. Trading figures, which are usually cheaper, they can come in any shape or form, but um, they're quite common to get out of machines, or you can find them in blind boxes. Garage kits, which as many of you probably know, they often need to be painted and assembled yourself as you're buying them, and many of them are fan-made for conventions. And model kits, which again, need to be assembled, a good example would be a Gumpla figure. So the categories are great, um, obviously keeping in mind that garage kits need to be assembled. So if you like a particular figure but you find out it's a garage kit, that'll put many people off. The site also caters for other merchandise like plushies, key rings, charms and accessories. They also have art books and dojinchi on their website. However, there's very strict rules about adding certain dojinchi, so it's not very comprehensive. There's music CDs, video games, and anime home media, but all of these are Japan releases only. Depending on where you live, it can also be a decent place to find figures that you're looking for, as people do sell them using the website. And finally, only officially licensed merchandise and convention approved garage kits are allowed on my figure collection. If you wanted to collect unlicensed figures, then you can go to my anime shelf, they do list unofficial kits and figures on their website. Next, I'm going to talk about the website I use to catalogue my pop vinyl collection. I use poppriceguide.com. It includes all of Funko's figures and merchandise, not just pop vinyls. For example, they also include daubs, plushies, mysteries, wacky wobblers, and Funko's cereal, which is a personal favourite of mine. I think they're freaking awesome. Um, many of the pop collection trackers do do this, but Pop Price Guide offers a market price for each figure and it's updated daily. It also gives you an estimate on your total collection's value, which I don't personally care about, but it's nice to know when you're comparing prices of buying a certain pop vinyl. Personally, I've never found anything to be missing on this website. As I said before, it is updated daily. Um, it's web-based only, so there's no app or software which would be nice, hopefully in the future they'll come out with an app, but at this stage the website's simplistic, but I like that. Next I'm going to talk about how I catalog my anime collection. This was a hard one because there's no real dedicated anime, DVD, Blu-ray, you know, home media collecting forum or database out there. So I turned to movie collecting databases, but no matter where I tried, the selection of anime was subpar especially me predominantly buying Australian and Japanese releases. They're almost never listed on these websites. I ended up choosing Movie Collector, also known as CLZ Movies for Collectors.com. This is a paid program, one of five databases on their website. 
the others being books, music, comics and video games. Initially, I bought the video game and movie collector app as it was the cheapest and had a barcode scanner for quickly adding things already in the database. The reason I went with collectors was the ability to customise entries and add anything missing from their database by hand. This by no means is time efficient and I'm not recommending this to anyone, but for me it was worth it and it was really the only option I was left with to visually represent and sort my collection with more fields than just an Excel spreadsheet would allow. There is a trial version I used before my purchase and what I learned is that I could sort my collection by platform, so DVD, VHS, Laserdisc, Blu-ray, etc by series such as Dragon Ball, the Monogatari series, or Black Lagoon. I could sort it by release year, manufacturing company, so keep all of Mad Men's releases together, Hanami together, Funimation, etc. Obviously alphabetical and a dozen other sort filters available. The cool thing is I could upload my own pictures even to pre-existing database entries. So for example, if I had a signed copy of a DVD, I could use that cover of the DVD rather than the one already on the database. I could also add little notes such as extras it included like a booklet or a sticker sheet and that was really handy because obviously you don't want to have too many pictures in your collection. Everything is updated locally on your device whether that be PC or smartphone but it's also updated to the cloud which automatically syncs and updates your collection to their web service which you can view at any time as well as any other programs that you have installed. Later I decided to buy the PC program because it added another layer of customizability. The main feature was to add several DVDs to a collected box set, which I own quite a few um, collector's editions of anime in a cardboard hard box. So that was the main reason I bought the PC software, however almost immediately after this the app was updated to add this feature but the desktop program is way more powerful undoubtedly. Um, it's just not as convenient as having the app. I can pull it out anywhere on the go and have my collection at arm's length. So now moving on to video games. As I mentioned, I also got the video game collectors app and this one I do recommend to any collectors out there. The database is kept very up to date and I've only ever had to add two or three Japanese exclusive games on here. Barcode scanning is a massive time saver and more often than not it proves very accurate. Once you do scan or locate the game you're after, there are several variant covers of the games depending on region release, the collector's edition, the platform it's on, etc. So you can just pick whichever one you have and that's really really great. There's also an option to add hardware such as consoles, controllers and that's a very nice addition. Technically you can add anything you want manually such as memory cards or other gaming peripherals. There's also a storage location field that can help you locate a game quickly if you have a large collection. GG. Ah, where was that Gears of War game again? Hang on, let me check right now. Ah, the little shelf. Yep, there you are. Now, lastly, onto comic books. While Comic Book Database is not the prettiest website to look at, it is the most comprehensive comic book database with its title page stating, the first goal of this project is to catalogue every comic, graphic novel, manga, creator, character, and anything else that could relate to the field of comics. And I do respect that mission. It's simple enough to navigate once you get the hang of it. You can browse comics by titles, creators and staff, characters, story arcs, publishers, etc. There's also a great feature that allows you to add a batch of issues from a particular title to either your collection or wish list. This means if you wanted to collect all of the Gears of War comics, you could simply add a batch of all of them onto your wish list instead of having to do it individually. So that's a great time saver. And another great feature on this site is documenting which comics compile a particular issue you're interested in. So for example, if you wanted to read the first Batman comic, Detective Comics 27 from 1939, to find a copy of this you'd have to pay well over a million dollars. But instead, here is a list of compilations to include Detective Comics 27, and here is a list of variants released later on that aren't quite as pricey. It's also worth noting that Comic Book Database has an extensive range of manga released in North America, 
but sadly that doesn't include light novels or Japanese released tankobon or magazines. So that was the video guys, I'd love to know in the comments section down below what apps or websites you use to catalogue your collection. Um, I didn't include manga on here, um, the comic book database does have some manga but I do collect Japanese manga. Um, at the moment I can count all of the series I own on my two hands here, so it's probably not worth having a um, database to collect that. Apart from that, if any of you have a miniature wargaming database for Warhammer, or Citadel miniatures or anything like that, I would love to know because I have been searching for one. Um, and also, any of you who collect Western figures, superhero figures, Marvel, DC, Sideshow, um, what is the best place to catalogue those figures? Because while my figure collection is a fantastic website, it is sort of Japanese stuff exclusively and I would love to see a Western version of something like that site. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Take it easy. <laughs>